Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. New Islands The Red Sea has parted to create two new islands. Located between Africa and the Arabian Peninsula, two brand new islands were recently born. While the birth of volcanic islands is a pretty rare event, we got to see it happen in real time thanks to satellite images. The images were brought to us by researchers at the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia. These two new islands formed when two tectonic plates pulled apart, providing scientists with new insights into a rift in the Earth's crust. It's a pretty slow process, with the tectonic plates only separating about 6 millimeters annually. It was finally enough that magma burst up through the cracks, creating eruptions that lasted for weeks at a time. Even with just a handful of millimeters between the two plates, it was enough to unleash so much magma that it hit the surface and cooled to form volcanic rock, creating the pair of islands. The islands belong to Yemen and are called Sholan and Jadid. Earthquake activity has affected the region for years, and all that shaking for over 10 years just created too much pressure, and more islands will probably pop up in the future. Number 9. The Thistlegorm The SS Thistlegorm was constructed back in 1940 in the dockyards of Sunderland, England. It was originally designed as an armed freighter, with a massive anti-aircraft gun and a machine gun fitted to its stern. After it was launched, the Thistlegorm sailed to the United States. It collected some steel rails and parts for aircraft, stopped briefly in Argentina, then loaded up with rum in the West Indies. But that would be her only useful voyage, because just one year after she was made, she sank. The SS Thistlegorm left Glasgow on June 2, 1941. She was bound for Alexandria in Egypt, stocked full of trucks and motorcycles. Remember that 1941 was during World War II. When the ship docked at safe anchorage on the Red Sea, she got bombarded by the German Luftwaffe. Four sailors and five Royal Navy crew were killed during the attack, and the ship, along with its cargo, was lost to the sea. The ship was officially rediscovered nine years later by Jacques Cousseau, and these days it is one of the best diving sites in the world. The ship is now home to a bunch of ruined vehicles from the 40s, as well as tons of moray eels, crocodile fish, and barracuda. Nearby is the gigantic propeller, the two anti-aircraft guns, tanks, and munitions all spread out in the rubble. Number 8. Dolphins and Coral Mucus Scientists have made a rather unusual discovery involving dolphins in the Red Sea. It was a few years ago when scientists first noticed that dolphins had a habit of scraping their skin against the corals just off the coast of Egypt. This behavior was also noticed by divers. And so, researchers from the University of Zurich investigated what these dolphins were doing. The dolphins use the Red Sea corals as a kind of medication. To understand, we have to look at the exact type of coral the dolphins rub themselves against. It's called Gorgonian coral, and it secretes mucus that contains antimicrobial properties. The dolphins have also been spotted rubbing their bodies against leather corals and sponges, both of which are living organisms that produce bioactive substances. So finally, scientists have figured out why these substances are so good for dolphin skin. They believe the compounds produced help to keep dolphin skin healthy. The dolphins are using the coral mucus as a kind of skincare product. Scientists say it prevents skin infections, keeps their skin nice and shiny, and helps their body stay healthy. Number 7. Hot Holes Dr. David A. Ross with the Oceanographic Institution has discovered another fiery hole in the Red Sea. A fiery hole has been defined by Dr. Ross as a deep pocket in the sea which is filled with hot and extremely salty water, also called hot brine. It extends down to the cooler sea bottom, but it's much hotter at the top. What's surprising is that there are now three mysterious hot holes that have been identified in the Red Sea. The first of these hot and salty patches were discovered in the 1880s by a Russian ship. Another was discovered in 1964 by a British research vessel. The water temperature in these hot pockets can reach upwards of 133 degrees Fahrenheit. This is like swimming in a hot tub. And one hole is located right off the coast of the sacred city of Mecca. What this means is that if the Israelites really had been fleeing in the days of Exodus, and Moses really had parted the sea, 
there is a pretty good chance the Egyptian soldiers chasing them across the seabed would have been boiled like lobsters. But what's causing the hot holes really? It seems to be hydrothermal vents, like the chimneys of volcanoes. While we don't know for sure, some scientists have speculated the sea floor is slowly drifting apart. The whole sea floor might collapse into the mouth of one giant underwater volcano. Number 6. The Squid and the Shipwreck In 2020, a team of scientists descended into the darkness of the Red Sea and discovered a lost shipwreck. They couldn't believe their eyes when they began investigating the mysterious wreckage, looking like some forgotten pirate ship stranded on the bottom of a black lagoon. Then, a sea monster appeared. It wasn't enough that they had just discovered a lost ship. They also found an enormous beast that appeared to have made the ruined vessel its home. The creature was some kind of miniature kraken, a giant squid that had taken over the wreckage and made its nest inside. Thankfully, the team who made the discovery wasn't actually down in the dark abyss wearing scuba suits, or else they may never have returned to the surface. They were instead sitting safely on their boat, the research vessel Ocean Explorer, and looking at the shipwreck through the camera lens of a remotely controlled vehicle. This all happened at a depth of about 2,800 feet, in one of the deepest parts of the Red Sea. So what was the creature? Zoologist Dr. Michael Vecchione says it was probably a purple back-flying squid. But not just any purple back-flying squid, one in giant form. This one was positively massive, likely between 7 and 10 feet long. And while that may not sound that big, just imagine a squid 4 or 5 feet taller than you as it wraps its tentacles around your face. The shipwreck was called the Pella. The ship originally caught fire and sank off the coast of Jordan in 2011. It had 1,229 passengers on board, though luckily they were all rescued before the ship burned to a crisp and sank beneath the surface. Number 5. The Lost Egyptian Fleet At an Egyptian temple in Deir el-Bari, there is a scene carved into the wall from about 1480 BC. The scene is of a giant merchant ship on some kind of unknown trading expedition. It's a gigantic vessel manned by a large crew of rowers. There are other carvings of other ships representing an entire fleet. Historians believe the picture is supposed to show the legendary journey of the Egyptians traveling to the mysterious land of Punt. It was here that the Egyptians bought all kinds of exotic goods, from treasures to unknown animals. For most of history, this picture was just that, a picture, one showing something that may or may not have happened. However, a recent discovery on a desolate stretch of the Red Sea coast has just proved that this journey was probably very real. Archaeologists from three different countries were excavating a dried lagoon when they found evidence of an ancient harbor. They believe it was from this harbor that Queen Hatshepsut ordered the great voyage to the land of Punt a mysterious land that some historians don't even believe is real. There isn't much left of this ancient harbor today. Archaeologists found a reed mat that dates back 3,800 years, old wooden planks, a man-made cave that was probably once used for shipbuilding, and old coils of rope woven from ancient papyrus. This was likely some kind of shipyard and harbor where ancient voyages began. These remarkable discoveries on the coast of the Red Sea might not tell us the exact location of the land of Punt, but it does prove that the Egyptians were extremely skilled when it came to building ships. Number 4. Tsunami Waiting to Happen More than anything, the Red Sea is hiding powerful geological forces beneath its crystal blue waters. 3,000 feet deep in the Tehran Strait, Researcher Sam Perkis discovered a gaping chasm outside the window of his submarine. A broken chunk of the sea floor was left behind by an undersea landslide. Sam, a geoscientist at the University of Miami, believes the undersea landslide probably happened about 500 years ago, and it triggered a tsunami that hit the Egyptian coastline with waves over 30 feet tall. There is still a giant chunk of land teetering on the edge of the abyss. And if this chunk of land slips, scientific models suggest it could create a second landslide, which would create an even bigger tsunami, one about twice the size of the one 500 years ago. Just the slightest shake, just one minor earthquake, 
could cause this entire underwater shelf to fall. And if that happens, it would be catastrophic. We're talking about 60-foot waves washing over Egypt, destroying everything near the coast. Some waves could reach upwards of 100 feet, and they could make it to the coast in less than three minutes. What makes this so terrifying is that researchers say it could happen any moment, with just the slightest rumble of the earth. Number 3. The Lost Chariots When Moses parted the Red Sea, the Israelites fled, and the Egyptian army followed. But before the Egyptian army could get to the other side, the sea closed and they were all swallowed under the water. This biblical adventure has never been proven as a genuine historical event. There are some researchers who say the evidence is stuck in the mud at the bottom of the Red Sea. These researchers are underwater archaeologists who were searching for ancient ships and artifacts off the coast of Egypt. According to what they told the Egyptian Antiquities Ministry, they discovered artifacts in the Gulf of Suez. Artifacts they say were proof an army was indeed swallowed by the sea. None of this has been confirmed, and it is hard to find any reliable source. But here's what the archaeologists said. They discovered 400 skeletons, hundreds of pieces of metal armor, and at least two war chariots. However, the team says there could be over 5,000 more skeletons and hundreds of more chariots buried beneath the sediment. One artifact uncovered from the sea was an ancient Egyptian sword called a Kopesh blade, allegedly found near one of the submerged chariots. Biblical scholars are now saying this is indisputable evidence that Moses' tale in the Bible really happened. However, none of the actual chariots or skeletons have been recovered or documented by any mainstream professionals. Number 2. The Tentacle Monster Lucas Ostertag, a German national, was diving in the Red Sea when he encountered a mysterious sea monster with no eyes, no ears, and no mouth. He described the bizarre animal as a long, square, rubber, pipe-like thing. Lucas wasn't the only one who saw the strange creature, since he was with an underwater group of divers. They all witnessed the freaky beast while diving in the Sataya Reef. Nobody in the group knew what it was, not even the local guides. Lucas said it instantly reminded him of the deep-sea species of monsters from the sci-fi novel The Swarm creatures whose only purpose is to destroy all of mankind. In reality, the bizarre creature wasn't even a creature at all. The thing that divers saw was simply the leftover arms from a dead jellyfish. A turtle had probably gotten a hold of the jellyfish, bit the juicy part off, and then let the bottom chunk with the legs attached drift off into the sea. These divers didn't see a new species of animal, just a turtle's unfinished meal. What do you think? Number 1. Ancient Trading Ship Divers from Saudi Arabia's Heritage Authority recently found the remains of an old shipwreck from the 18th century. They discovered it in the northern part of the Red Sea, filled with hundreds of awesome artifacts. While nobody knows the name of this ship, archaeologists believe it probably crashed into the coral reef, spilling its cargo and ripping its hull apart. Researchers found scraps of pottery, jars that had once been filled with spices, and scraps of the shipwreck itself. It was probably a merchant vessel traveling across the Red Sea sometime between 1725 and 1750. If that's not exciting enough for you, a team of Saudi and German archaeologists also recently found a Roman shipwreck from a much earlier time. It crashed and sank about 2,000 years ago and is currently the oldest archaeological shipwreck that's ever been found along the coast of Saudi Arabia. That's saying something, considering there are hundreds of busted vessels down here, leftover trading ships from the days when the Romans controlled the region. Trade was a major source of income, and he who controlled the Red Sea trading routes controlled the flow of cash and goods from the Middle East into Egypt and beyond. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon. Bye!